Hello and welcome to yet another video on my channel. In this problem, we are going to find out whether the given set W, right? So W is mentioned in a set builder form where the elements of W are given by X comma Y comma Z. And there is a condition that the X, Y and Z of this element X comma Y, Z satisfies. So L, M and N are uh, assumed to be real numbers. And of course, X, Y, Z are also real numbers because we need to prove that this set W is actually a subspace of R3. Now, this R is written in a funny way because this R denotes the set of all real numbers and a three on top of that denotes all the three dimensional um, points in the three dimensional space. So basically, we need to see, we need to check uh, two conditions for showing that W is a subspace. The first condition is that W is non-empty, right? And we can show this by showing that zero is actually an element of W, right? So this zero element, again, is may, may not be equal to the exact zero in the set W, but the zero element is the additive identity, right? Okay, so that's the first condition. The second condition is that we need to show that if we have, let's say, uh, a particular vector v and another vector u, which belong to w, right, then, uh, and, and also we need to assume that there are uh, some constants a and b, which belong to the field f, right? So in this case, the field is r because all this x, y, z, l, m, n are all uh, real numbers. So that is a field. Then a times v plus b times u also belong to w. So these are the two conditions that we need to satisfy in this problem. Okay, without further ado, let's get into our problem and let's try to solve uh, for or solve that, you know, let's try to prove that w is actually a subspace. Okay, so we denote the zero element by saying that this is zero comma zero comma zero, and uh, let's see whether this satisfies the given condition. So L times zero plus M times zero plus N times zero will be zero plus zero plus zero, which is equal to zero, right? So the condition that L times X plus M plus Y plus N times Z is equal to zero is satisfied. Therefore, the element, the zero element, which is equal to zero comma zero comma zero belongs to W. The first condition is satisfied. Now for the second condition, let's imagine that we have got two elements V and U. So let's write V as um, well, it's it's a it's a it's an element of W, so it should be v1 comma v2 comma v3 that belong to W, and since it belongs to W, uh, it is equivalent to saying that L times v1 plus L times uh, pardon me M times v2 plus N times v3 is equal to zero, and uh, we imagine that u is also another element, so u1 plus u1 comma u2 comma u3 belong to w, and this is equivalent to saying that l times u1 plus m times u2 plus n times u3 is equal to zero. So why are these these all of these equal to zero? These are all equal to zero because u and v are elements of w and as you can see me highlighting the condition they should u and v should satisfy these conditions for being elements of w okay now let's uh, let, let's turn towards the constants a and b right you can see on the top right corner of your screen 
that I had mentioned A and B should be their uh, elements from the field. And in this case, the field is a set of real numbers. So let's say that A and B belong to R, right? Uh, assume that. We assume that. We also assume, uh, we had also assumed previously that our elements U and V are from W. Now, let's find out whether A times V plus B times U belong to uh, belong to the set W or not. So A times V. So V is V1 comma V2 comma V3. So basically A is multiplied by that plus B is multiplied by, right? So this is a linear combination. B is multiplied by the vector U1, U2, U3. U1, U2, U3. So we have got this linear combination, and as you know that uh, these are two scalar multiplications, right? So this will be a times uh, v1 comma a times v2 comma a times v3 and b times u1 comma b times u2 comma b times u3, and then we have the vector addition. Uh, element wise, so a v1 plus b u1, comma a v2 plus b u2, comma a v3 plus b u3. Okay, so this is our vector, and we need to show that this vector actually belongs to W. Okay, so let's uh, let, let's name the first equation as equation one and the second equation as equation two on the top of your screen, you can see them. So what we'll do is that we will multiply the first equation by A and we'll multiply the second equation by B and we will add them, right? So adding the first equation multiplied by A and the second equation multiplied by B gives A times L V1 plus M V2 plus N V3 plus B times L U1 plus M U2 plus N U3 and that should be equal to A times 0 plus B times 0. Correct? So the A times 0 comes from the equation 1, B times 0 comes from the equation 2. Let's scroll it a little bit. Okay, now you can see here that A L times V1 plus A M times V2 plus A N times V3 plus B L times U1 plus B M times U2 plus B N times U3 is equal to zero again. Okay, so um, what we do here is we will take L common or maybe, you know, all, all those terms having L, we'll write them together. So this is a term and this is another term. So ALV1, ALV1 plus BLU1, we'll write them together. And along with that, we will again, you know, like group the element having M in the beginning and another element having m near the end together so a m v2 plus b m u2 right so both of these elements you've written them together and then we'll write the other two elements having n together right so why do we do that we'll see in the next step right so these are the two elements with n one is a n v3 plus b n u3 right so all of these together is zero so we have just rearranged the elements now we'll take l common from the first element first two elements so it gives l times a v1 plus uh, pardon me that's right but i just wanted to change the color here so a l times a v1 plus b u1 right plus m times what do we have m times from the second two uh, terms in the previous equation? We have got a v2 plus b u2, correct? 
and that added with uh, n times we take n common from the two elements last two elements that is a v3 plus b u3 and that gives us zero right now if you look if you observe very carefully here what do you see you see that um, a v1 plus b u1 is the first element of the uh, is, is the is the first coordinate of a v plus b u i have highlighted that with yellow right you can see that very well okay now hold your breath we have got a v a v1 plus b u2 as a second coordinate of a v plus b u and that exactly is there in the second bracket over here and finally you can see that we have got a v3 plus b u3 as a third coordinate of our a v plus b u vector and that exactly is replicated in the last bracket over here right so uh, basically what do we have now we have the following let's scroll this a little bit right we have something like this l times um, the first so, so 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 l times maybe x plus m times y plus n times z and that is equal to 0 and this means that x comma y comma z this is equivalent to x comma y comma z belonging to w right so that is the that is the given condition for an element to be in w and by comparing with this we get to know that uh, a v1 plus b u1 comma a v2 plus b u2 comma a v3 plus b u3 belongs to w and that is exactly a v plus b u belongs to w and that gives us a second condition so this condition is of the linear combination belonging to w and therefore we can say that w is a subspace of what subspace of the vector space r3 and that completes the proof so thank you so much for watching this video